All right, what up, everybody? So, I decided to try to mess around with a gamepad uh, controller from C++ because I wanted to start implementing some sort of AI that's able to control uh, a video game, much like the guy you've seen that actually made that GTA car controller. The he did something with Python and TensorFlow, and has some sort of overlay that's able to pick up the gamepad controller and the visual display from the from the monitor and use it in a neural net for the AI to make decisions. So I want to try to get into doing that, but I try to implement something in QT. QT had a gamepad controller that you could you could try to mess with, which I have shown here where they have this gamepad monitor. It's one of their simple libraries, but when I try to implement it, my F710 controller uh, would not respond to it. So rather than deal with all that nonsense, I just decided to go ahead and implement what I have shown here is my gamepad server. So I implemented myself and I used it, I did it using uh, X input directly from DirectX. So one of the problems with QT and DirectX is that QT has a lot of um, cross compatibility and a lot of libraries implemented to take control of your Windows environment. So I found that there was a problem when I tried to include this windows.h in a header file, so I had, I ended up putting it in this .cpp so I can include the X input. You need windows.h for X input to actually utilize it. So I made a wrapper library that basically converts a lot of the same stuff that X input is doing and throw it into its own gamepad state that I created here. So I created this gamepad state for pad A, pad B, X, Y, the right shoulder, left shoulder, trigger, joystick, all that fun stuff. I even made my own little structs here. And so this wrap, this server gets the state. It's running on a timer, which here I, I've got it set for 15 uh, milliseconds. So I want to be able to make change that and make it set it to whatever the user wants to set it or the developer wants to set it to. Um, there's a couple of local functions here that require structures from x in, from x input dot h, and I want to make sure that that's something that the rest of the world can't see or get a hold of because it causes problem with Qt. And basically, um, we've got this timer that calls. It calls read state. Read state comes in here and it it does all this stuff for uh for for um getting the x input all the windows the window stuff. So we do it here, X input gets state, it fills the state, and then that gets passed along to the one of the local functions, prepare state to send, and that fills up one of these states, this gamepad state, to send out for QT to actually utilize. So that's what's shown over here is we have our main window for, uh, if you understand QT and widgets, so you always get yourself a main window. So when you execute it, you have a main window widget, and it takes control of all the uh, the main event loop and um, well actually Q application handles that but uh, main window is actually taking control of all the connections for receiving signals. So here we, we call a connection in the gamepad server instance. Um, we're checking for a signal that it's sending for state update and then we're going we're gonna to call a slot that I called catch gamepad state. And it gets the GPS state as well as the player ID. So um, X input allows for up to four players. I'm not sure if that's changeable or not. I haven't looked into it. And then it shows here that whatever button is pressed in your controller, and you, you can see they're non blocking. So we can have an A and a B and an X and a trigger the way that a game patch should work. And I'm going to go ahead and execute this so you can see it. So this is the widget, uh, does nothing for now. What uh, we want to see is this output that's on the screen. And you can see that it has x-axis, y-axis, um, there's no buttons. It's just uh, pumping out for player zero, and this is continuously running. So if I try to select something, it's just going to disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and press some buttons on the controller and turn it on first. So we get that. So now you can see these are the dead zones for the controller. And as I move my left joystick left and right, we see the left thumb x-axis is changing. And if I go up and down, the y-axis is changing. Same for the right. And then I can move both at the same time. And you see I said it was a non-blocking. So it's all working continuously at a very high rate of, well, 60 hertz. I'm not sure what game, game patch should be set. So you can see I can press all the buttons on here. So I'm pressing the right pressed, left pressed, x pressed, a pressed, b pressed, start, back, so, yeah, this seems to work fairly smoothly. Um, 
I haven't actually tried to implement anything anything with it. This is just a template that I have stored up on GitHub, and it's freely available for anybody that wants to download it. You will need the DirectX uh, library. So once you get the DirectX library, there's a couple of linking that's set up inside of the dot pro it makes a couple assumptions so in a, in a link for the dot pro we have an assumption that windows stk directory is defined so as the stk library version and um it also kind of makes an assumption i believe that uh, it's using uh, microsoft visual studio so i have this set up for microsoft visual studio but i have not used it for ming i haven't tried to use it for ming uh, I want to try to test it for me, but I'm not sure how that's going to work for this library. Should work. It's calling a dot lib uh, that's built by uh, by MSVC. I'm not sure if it will actually work with me, so that's one thing that I'll just test eventually. Um, so yeah, that's the this is the gamepad template that I've created. You need Qt, Windows SDK, uh, the uh, Windows SDK, and Something that comes along with X input, you see it's calling X input and X input nine underscore one underscore zero. So something that you're using doesn't work, you probably would have to change the dot pro if you were to if you were to get this repository. All right, so uh, that's the project I'm working on now. Hopefully, I can turn around and convert this to a screen. Uh, I already have a screen capture template on GitHub, and I want to merge the two and then try to see if I can actually grab those the the gamepad input as I'm playing a, a game and if I can do that as well as grab the screen without slowing down my computer which I have a Titan so it shouldn't be too much of a problem then I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can implement a neural net and pass along the input of the screen into the neural net and get some generated controller outputs to see if I can control it from get the program controlling a video game so once I get to that level I'll have that on GitHub and then everyone can use that. So thank you for watching.